Hi everyone, good morning, it's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. I hope that you are having a fabulous day today, that you've woken up feeling good and positive about the world and enjoying some nice weather. It's beautiful, sunny weather here and I'm just enjoying another day. I get an opportunity to talk to you and uh, to be with you in your living room, kitchens, bedrooms, <laughs> wherever you are. And just to let you know how much I value you, um, how much I value our community. The 60 and Me group is, um, you know, we're very strong now around the world and we're here um, on a sort of practical level, giving advice and resources and uh, information, you know, fun content, but also at the same time, building a community here for us to be together with one another, not to feel alone on this journey. And I know that we can sometimes, you know, feel that way. But anyway, this morning I'm drinking my cup of tea. I've got my um, green tea, it's jasmine. And uh, it seems like a, a good good tea for a nice sunny day. It's actually very nice iced as well. I started having iced green tea. It's really good. So I hope you've got a cup of tea, coffee, whatever you like. And um, let's just chat about something that is really one of the uh, key um, pivots, you know, kind of priorities for 60 and Me. And that is healthy aging. Now we all want to live as long as we can and we want to be healthy in our older years. And that is, you know, it's challenging sometimes, but I think there are some very simple things we can do that are mostly free that uh, we can, you know, include as habits in our life that, that will change the way we age and give us a healthier outlook and a healthier body and mind. So I'm going to give you some thoughts here and, uh, you know, first of all, saying right up front, uh, aging is profound and, and complicated and everyone I'm speaking to here is not in the same place. Some of you are dealing with medical issues or, you know, some kinds of things that are out of your control and, uh, you know, my heart goes out to you during that time because it's, it's tough. Maybe you've had some surgery or you're recovering from an illness. So, uh, you know, I do know that I'm not trying to be, you know, kind of blasé about and, and very superficial about it. But if we can do some of these things, I think it can help. So, and again, don't beat yourself up if you start and fail, <laughs> because that is, um, you know, is part of this whole process of growing. And uh, just, you know, let, your, let yourself make mistakes and move forward. So here are 10 habits. I'm gonna go through them kind of quickly because we've covered them before. There's no great mysteries here. <laughs> there are no silver bullets. I can't say do this and all of a sudden you're going to be healthy and well. It's just not gonna happen. But here are some ideas, 10 of them. First, make walking a daily ritual. I do this, I try to walk 10,000 steps a day, it's tough, but at least get out into the world and try to walk. You know, listen to audiobooks while you're walking. I invite a friend to come along. You know, if you've got grandchildren nearby, just you know, pick them up after school and walk them home and you know, just build, build a routine where you incorporate walking. It's, it's one of the best all around exercises. I mean, we know we need um, other uh, you know, cardio and weightlifting, but, uh, but walking is a great place to start. Make it a ritual. Go to the shops if you can walk and, and bring your groceries home, carry them home. Get the combination there. Another thing is to um, give yourself reasons to smile. You know, smiling is a really positive way to engage with other people. If you smile at someone on the street, they'll probably think you're a little crazy, but um, just smile, say hi. <laughs> you know, give yourself a reason. Go to a comedy show. You know, spend time with kids. They will make you laugh like crazy. But you know, do things, um, leave little messages around the house. Or, you know, just sign up for one of those pages that gives you an inspirational joke message. Or 60 and Me is a good place to come. We always have fun articles that hopefully will make you smile. That's two. Another thing is to establish eating healthy eating habits. Now, this might seem like the most obvious, and it is. Um, but, you know, we've been around 60-some years, and we know what's good for us and what isn't. We know. And it's not a big, um, you know, mystery to know to avoid sugars and, you know, over-processed food, uh, not to drink a lot of alcohol. We, we know this stuff. But what's really important, I think, is to create a home, an environment where you're not tempted. It's so much easier to not eat the cookie if it's not in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> because you know you can have as many little discussions with yourself about why it's okay to have those two cookies five cookies than it is to not eat them so that's one thing I think that's super important um, and also do do um, you know health put healthy foods in your kitchen 
cucumbers, uh, carrots, celery to, to nibble on, red peppers. Those are my, one of my favorite go-to um, healthy just snack um, things. And then of course just put, you know, go shopping and look for things that are, are good for you. Salmon with the for omega oils and fish in general. And if you eat, pro, you know, chicken and, and other meats, protein, super good for you. Keep low on the carbs. But you know, you know all of this and this is just one more thing to remind you of. Remind myself too. Another thing is to find fun activities to make you move. So again, if you don't want to go to the gym, maybe you've got a dance class in the community center that you could go to. Maybe there's a, a, a belly dancing class or just a tango a class, something that keeps you moving. Find ways, I mean, if it's swimming perhaps, or just even just, you know, as I said before, go out walking with your friends and, and find a running partner, find a walking partner, someone that gets you moving. It's really super important. Another thing, find time with, or make time with, with positive people. You know, this is the time in our lives when we've got so many friends from the past that were kind of contextual. You know, they were friends of our children or they were just people we met at work. And they, they became friends, you know, acquaintances, but we didn't really, um, you know, we didn't really make friends with them in a, in a sort of deep and meaningful way. And so they became co sort of contextual. I think it's really important to, to not, um, you know, I've just dropped a piece of paper that's going to, I'm going to need in a second. I'm going to pick it up. Um, you know, the people that are going to bring joy into your life. So get rid of the toxic friends. I think that's the most important thing. Another thing is to get out of the house and join clubs. You know, get, get used to, get engaged in things. I have a meetup group that meets to, um, to do train journeys. And that's kind of our thing. We go on trips every few weeks. But um, you know, join a meetup. Get out and meet new people. People are very important. Another thing is learn to meditate. Now, when I say learn to meditate, meditation is honestly as simple as just sitting and breathing. Just watching your breath in and out. And there are so many lovely online programs now that you can uh, join. So uh, you don't hesitate to even just go on to, to a, um, a YouTube channel and just look at instructions for meditating. A lady called Susan Piver is a, um, uh, a meditation teacher. I interviewed her for 60 and Me, and she does a free uh, online, it's called the Open Heart Project. And you can just get a little email from her every couple of days. And she guides you through a meditation practice. So she's really, really helpful. And of course, all the, the uh, benefits, you know, the health benefits of, of low blood pressure and the, the um, changes that it makes to your brain. Meditation has been proven um, with a lot of research, not just anything I've read, to say how much it helps your health overall. So that's super important. Another thing is to learn to laugh more. And that is very simple. Just, you know, relax, relaxes your muscles, makes you feel good. And uh, just, I guess at the bottom line is to see the humor in things. <laughs> you know, when we were younger, everything seemed so serious and we didn't laugh at our mistakes. You know, we didn't laugh at the silly things we did. But now maybe that could be a, time, a way to bring some healthy aging into, into your life. Just laugh more. Find something funny to in every situation. Find something positive in every situation, even if it doesn't seem like it at the time. Another thing, and I've lost count here, but we'll keep going, is just how to manage stress in your life. You know, stress kills. We know this. It's not good for your health. It is not good for your, your tummy fat, <laughs> all these uh, production of cortisol, things that make you uh, gain weight. It all goes back to handling stress. And I think that's super important to, to find ways that um, you know, take you away from stress and depression and make you feel balanced about the things that are going on in your life. I know it's not easy, trust me. I've been through moments of depression in my life and I've also dealt with stress. I deal with it quite a bit. But I found ways with meditation, uh, exercise, um, you know, not making unhealthy choices with foods. That's a big thing for me is like when I eat food that I feel guilty about later. You know, I just, I'm now trying to just not be stressed about it. Just to know that, like I said earlier, don't surround yourself with temptation and just have a bit of fun with, with your life. Don't be so hard on yourself. I know, it's challenging. Another thing, oh, I gotta pick up my piece of paper here. Excuse me for coming back. I just dropped this paper on the floor and then I, I can't remember everything that was on the page. Okay, this is a really good one. This is forgive yourself and forgive others. Super important. This is where you, you know, you, you've been carrying this weight with you all your life about something you did, something you said, 
a relationship that didn't work, um, perhaps it's something with your children or your family. You know, at age 60, 65, 70, you've got to kind of, in my opinion, move on. You know, let's just move on. Um, I recently have been starting to write down my memories from my past. No big deal, not even a journal. It's just kind of bullets in a little book I bought called The Book of Me. And it's really a prompt, you know, to just remember things. And as I remembered them, I found myself, you know, like little tears coming from my eyes, like just, oh my gosh, I didn't, I can't believe I did that or said that or didn't say that. And uh, then I thought, you know, this is nice to have a little release of it, but honestly, I've got to move on. I mean, that was like 30 years ago and the people involved have long forgotten it. So, you know, let it go. Another thing, which is, uh, I think it's almost the final thing here, is to learn how to get back into nature. I went out yesterday uh, for a ride with a friend and we went up into the mountains and I normally take the train everywhere but she has a car so we, we drove into places that I wouldn't normally go. I, I, I don't have a, a vehicle anymore and I was just in awe of nature and it's such a, you know, you don't have to go very far from your city or town to get into the woods, you know, into nature. Most, uh, most places have buses if you don't have a car, just get on them and go. And, and just, you know, smell the flowers, as they say. You know, pick up a flower or look at a flower and check the detail. Watch for animals and little creatures, even the little bugs, <laughs> bees and, and butterflies. And just um, absorb it and let it be a nourishment to you. You know, let it be something that fills you up with positivity and energy. You know, because despite all we've created in this beautiful world with our homes and our clothes, our beauty, our makeup or all these things we've d designed and created to you know, make us feel more um, you know, balanced and beautiful. It's really free in nature. You know, Mother Nature is a magician. She, she's just created a beautiful world for us and I'm not trying to be you know, mystical or magical about it. It's just really, nature's gorgeous. And if you get out in it, you'll feel better. So I think those are 10. I hope I've covered them all. Good reasons um, or goals for healthy aging and things you can you know, create habits around in your life. So I do hope that's been um, uplifting and useful and uh, made you feel like you wanna get out there and walk and uh, visit friends and, uh, and watch nature become beautiful and just take time for yourself today and have a wonderful day. Thanks again for being here, everyone. It's truly my pleasure to talk to you and share my thoughts and know that you're out there and um, I really care for you and oh, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're with us. So my question for it simply today is, you know, what are your goals for healthy aging? What are you doing to create healthy aging in your life? Leave your comments below. We'll have a, a conversation, a chat, and I will look forward to seeing you all back here again really soon. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take good care. Bye-bye.